In honor of Women's History Month, we've been talking with female leaders in sports, politics, business, and entertainment. And this morning, we are focusing on... Every Friday during Women's History Month... All month long, we've been celebrating Women's History Month by talking with female leaders in sports, politics, business, and entertainment. And this Nobody takes down Angel Stuff Number 7 easy. There's a reason why, after 100 channels destroyed, Angel Stuff Number 7 is still here. There's a reason why nobody wanna get in a beat with Angel Stuff Number 7. But you don't take this seriously. And now your ass is barbecued.
When soul singer and black activist Sam Cooke wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come, it was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rock has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cook was asking for, a change. It's said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Ebenrod is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. This is Dusty Basement Studios, and we approve of this message. The Mississippi campaign represents everything that you claim that you want. The beginning of an all-black independent nation. The ability to control your own resources. Your politics. The law. Be able to do your own thing for a change. Creating an economy. Create and produce or anybody on the planet would want. You're afraid you don't want to do nothing. Three hours talking about the Mississippi campaign. I want him to assume that I'm a person looking to uh, get down with this Mississippi campaign. How, how does one get started with this? Sir? <laughs> Mr. Angel Stupno. What was the question again? I didn't Let your child grow up. 
let these black people go up. Don't
Yeah, Tale. Yeah. Rolls. Yo. <clears throat> All right. Uh, yes. Uh, thanks for letting me on the platform tonight, uh, brother. And uh, I just want to present to y'all this subject. Um, was the topic is uh the Chicago uh shootings and shootings that's going on around America of course and also I will speak on um you know uh these uh police that's getting away with uh murdering uh black people throughout America and um where there's no accountability besides uh, civil lawsuits and out of court settlements and all that there's no other justice coming behind the black lives lost in the streets at the hands of police here in America. But I want, but the main part of the topic is, is what I want to talk about. You know, I was just sitting up uh, scrolling yesterday through, um, you know, um, the internet and uh, I went on a local site in Chicago, you know, where they always talk about the countless murders that goes on there on a daily basis and stuff. And um, then I went to a local uh, page, uh, which is another source uh, which had the Atlanta Journal, Con which is which was the Atlanta Journal Constitution. And for those of you that know about the Atlanta Journal Constitution, that paper comes out of Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, well, um, I just want to say, uh, you know, and, and I do also periodically sometimes check around the websites, you know, to get the latest on what's happening around the rest of the country when it comes to this black on black violence. And uh, I just I just want to say this to you, family. For those of you that are listening to this live uh, podcast, and that will be listening to it once it's posted uh, on YouTube, um, you know um, now. Um, You know, right now, um, right now, I want to just say that, um, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's painful. It's painful because much as I, I yearn to see us be liberated as a free people for once and for all after almost 500 years of uh, slavery and oppression in this country, I... Um, I'm, I'm almost at a loss of words when I see all the stuff, especially the murder and mayhem going on between the cities of Chicago and Atlanta and other places like Detroit, uh, and, you know, and the list goes on, you know, and um, I, I, I mean, you know, um, it, it pains me to see that because I want to see us free. I don't want to see us become an exterminated people is what I'm trying to say. And that's what we're looking in the direction towards. If we keep on doing what we're doing among ourselves, as well as, of course, allowing others to do what they want to do to us. And, um, you know, um, this pains me because, uh, I'm going to tell y'all something, you know, I, 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 a part of me, this makes a part of me want to just say, um, forget about the struggle of our people. It really do, you know, and I don't know if many of you in black YouTube land who, who profess to be conscious or pro-black would even 
have the courage to admit something like that. But I do admit that at times I wonder if it's even worth my time dealing with this, you know, because I see a lot of us don't want to come up out of this slave condition, this mental mind state that we're in of slave oppression, you know, and then, uh, you know, when it comes to others doing injustices to us, we're not willing to respond promptly uh, as effectively as we should but we will be willing to respond very fast and promptly when it comes to us, you know, uh, you know, doing something to one another, you know, and this is just the cowardness, the purity cowardness I see in our people, you know, and I mean, you know, all these black on black murders taking place. I mean, most of it, I would say probably about a good 85% of it is over pure BS. You know, I see 20-year-olds, 21-year-olds and lost their life. Even brothers my age, like 53, 54, 55 and older, even in their 70s, getting gunned down. And they should be in their rocking chairs trying to enjoy the last of their days on this earth. And they ending up in some altercation or dispute and getting shot, especially by a younger person from among our group, you know, who feel like they want to challenge some old school person, probably, or whatever the case is, you know. So, I mean, you know, and then, um, you know, uh, it's like we have a situation to where it's, um we're just dying. I'm seeing it with infants who didn't even see a whole year out of their life. Maybe six month year old infant. I think I saw yesterday like one recently or last year that got killed in Atlanta by a parent that was very neglectful, you know. Then you got other indi uh, infants and babies getting caught up in the middle of shootouts getting getting their head pods blown away over nothing, you know, especially because it's a negligence, more than likely of the parents or whatever the case is that resulted in that, you know, and it's like, we don't, it's like, how can you expect other people to respect us and we don't have respect for ourselves? We don't have that love for each other, you know? Like we want others to have for us, but we don't have that kind of love for each other. And, you know, not, uh, you know, making mockery of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. But I've always wondered, had he dedicated part of his struggle toward helping us not to commit violence among ourselves, as well as not to commit violence toward those that were the main ones that were actually oppressing us, I wonder how black people would be today as a community among themselves if he employed that part to his method called nonviolence, you know? And 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 uh because I mean we really need it. We really need, you know, um some type of kind of uh reconciliation in terms of how we deal with each other because it's at an all time low, you know, and, and uh, what's sad is, is that, you know, when we kill each other, I mean, it's just over some of the most nonsense. I mean, we kill each other over more nonsense or, uh, you know, how can I put it uh, over just basic stuff worse than animals in the wildlife kingdom do? Because at least they doing it for the purpose of, of survival according to their natural uh, habitat as a species. But we kill each other, you know, 
Oh, because somebody stepped on our shoes or somebody bumped into us or somebody stared at us the wrong way or uh, somebody glanced at you or somebody glanced at your woman and your man. You know, you can't let bygone be bygone. And, uh, uh, so so you got to put a bullet in them. And if you don't get retaliated at, you may be in prison for the rest of your life. If not have your life lost as a result, you see. So this is what I'm saying. And this is why me and uh, someone else has been pushing the Mississippi campaign over the last four years where we could be able to more effectively deal with this situation. Because apparently the way that some of us is trying to deal with this situation and addressing this black on black violence is not working. And of course, like I've spoken of in the past, you know, um, that, that, um, I mean, like I was telling a relative the other night when he asked me, do I think Farrakhan is doing something for the people? And because we was talking about the situation as far as the violence that goes on, especially in Chicago, where his organization headquarters is located. And, you know, I say I told my relative, I say, when someone bring that up, the first thing I say to them. Just look at Chicago. That's all you got to do is look at Chicago. And you know, if they can't get it together in Chicago, as effectively stopping the black on black violence, then how can they do that anywhere else in America? So like they say, wherever the work starts at, if it starts there, make it work there first. Like they say, it starts at home first, see? So, uh, I mean, we have to understand that um, while we so engulfed in this situation with Russia and Ukraine, we're at war with each other as indigenous black Americans in this country. You know, and, 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 not, and not counting the injustices that uh, that is brought upon us by others, especially the races in this country, you know, uh, that controls everything in this country, you see. So um, it's like we need to be having, uh, you know, international criminal charges brought up on those that oppress us. You know, we need to be displaced people, you know, who need a refuge from this situation that we're going through here in America. See? You know, but the reason no one is clamoring to our cause like they doing to people like the people of Ukraine or the people of Syria or the people of Iraq or the people of uh, Afghanistan is because People, other people don't take us serious. It's just that simple. Because we haven't showed the world that we garner that attention to be taken serious. Bars are uh, welfare is not only as a group of people, but it's just being a part of humanity. So this, this is why other different cultures, foreign immigrants get treated differently because they take themselves seriously. You know, and, and, and um, it's like every day and I look up and I, I, I go on uh, the internet, I go online and I'm like some popping up on YouTube like with the situation with uh, Amir Locke, a young brother that was uh, over recently ago murdered in Minneapolis. Well, the breaking news, as they say, <laughs> as some would say, is that 
it won't be any charges against the police that killed them, see? And uh, we just had a big mass riot that started over another police killing of a black person named George Floyd in that same city in state where that took place at, you know? And the mayor who was running on the basis that they would uh, no longer have people, I mean, police uh, carrying out uh, no knock warrants, you know, uh, allowed this to go on. And of course, this was a, a Jewish Caucasian who didn't give a damn, apparently. You know how they use our boats, our black boats, with these, uh, you know, good good promises and then get in there and don't fulfill them. One of them type of situations. But however, you know, uh, another cop gets away. This other day or recently before that, I heard another cop wouldn't be charged with murdering a black person. I forgot which state it was in or where it was, but you know, the reality is, is that, you know, uh, if we don't get it together, we might as well become an exterminated people. Like I've been saying for the longest since I've been on social media talking. You know, we ought to, we ought to just accept our fate and become an exterminated people. I mean, because we don't, I mean, most of the stuff we do on social media is a uh, bull doodle. If it ain't talking about debates, we talking about some other bull crap. Why brothers and sisters of all ages in this country is getting murdered every day at the hands of the police or race soldiers or whatever you want to call them and at the hands of each other. And it's and it's and it's hurt. It it hurts because we don't we don't have no uh love for each other, you know. You know, and it's like uh the self hatred is so deep that just like the other day. And and then I heard something else about this same situation, but down at uh, Georgia State University in Atlanta, a place where I am familiar with, because I used to uh, spend time in Atlanta when I was uh, younger, and I remember that location in the downtown area. Well, this was one of their branches in Newton, Georgia, on the outskirts, in Newton County, Georgia, on the outskirts of Atlanta. Let me piggyback. Let me uh go uh rewind that. It's in Newton County, Georgia, but it's on the outskirts of Atlanta. But they do have a main branch in Atlanta too that I'm familiar with. But anyway, predominantly, a lot of black college students attend that university, and two had the police called on them. You know. Uh, because they were tardy, meaning they were late for class. I'm talking about students that pay to go to school to obtain what they call a higher education in these uh, folks' education school systems, you know. And and um, the person that called that decided to call the police on them when after. She asked them to leave class and they went and she went and uh, after they told her we pay to go to school, but yet she said, okay, and then came back with two armed polices. Okay. And, 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 and so uh, this professor was also black, a sole black person. And um, for those of you that are familiar with the story, uh, I just heard today that she got uh, terminated. She'll still be able to take uh, teach a class, um, but not but not in contact with the student 
I don't know what they ca- how they call that. I forgot how they call that. But uh, she could still teach from home, I guess, or, or online or whatever the case is. But she would not be teaching on that school campus. And, uh, and, and, and you know, that was just, you know, because you calling the police on other black people knowing that anytime the police get called on a black person, you know, 90 some percent of the time, somebody finna get killed. And you black yourself knowing you could even encounter a situation like that personally. And you would do something petty is call the police because two black students came in late for class. You know, and see, this is the stuff. This is the stuff that irks me. Because we know. That. What we are up against is very serious. And we know that we have all, uh, you know, odds pointed at us from different directions when it comes to any forms of oppression in this country. And yet we're going to have the audacity. Now, now mind you, I don't got no problem with somebody calling the police if, if, if it's for a just reason. OK, but you calling the police on somebody because they was tardy. In school. You know, that don't make no sense at all. But I'm glad the person that handled that situation who happened to be uh, the president of the college, I believe uh, he's black, but he had that situation. And so. uh he handled it justly, just like it was supposed to be handled. And I'm glad that them two students got some kind of justice out of this. But I mean, that could have turned ugly just by the fact that she called the police over them over something petty like that, you know? And and and, and, and see, and I heard from my understanding that they got a, a habit of actually doing that. So that just ain't happened once. They have a, 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 a big tendency of doing that in that particular uh, location while it's that uh, school institution I just mentioned, you know. So, I mean, and, and it's, it's just bad. All because, you know, if you identify their race, you know the police coming. And then what's so crazy about this situation is I seen some yesterday where it was some Hispanic dude probably looked like he was Hispanic, but he was raving and acting a fool and carrying the police do all kind of changes while they was trying to talk him into getting out of his car. He even threatened to do something to the police and even kept begging the police over and over to shoot him. The end it all just just put a bullet in him. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the police uh, even when this to re- respond is, no, we don't want to do that. We want to work this out some other kind of way. And as I'm watching that and I'm saying to myself, now, nah, this was in San Diego, California, another city I've spent time at in my life. And they have one of the racist police forces in the country, by the way. But anyway, uh, this was in Southern California. Those of you that heard of San, San Diego. This is in Southern California, right? Or a hundred miles south of Los Angeles. But uh, anyway, um, these police la- allowed them to take them through all them stages until they finally wrestled them down to the ground and handcuffed them and and, and everything went, went as usual without nobody getting hurt or killed. And I'm thinking... And he was calling them all kind of names and everything, telling them to uh, suck his follies and all other kind of stuff, you know. And so, you know, it's like, man, I'm just tripping on this. And I'm like thinking, man, if this would have been somebody like George Floyd or Philando Castile, you know, or Austin Sterling or Eric Gardner or Michael Brown, 
you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, <laughs> or Sean Bell, and the list goes on, you know. They would oblige they request and actually put a bullet in them. Even dozens of them to make sure he didn't get back up breathing. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, I mean, you know, it's like, and this, and this is happening concurrently all the time. You know, well, white people and other different people, the police are, you know, try to go through all kind of major go negotiations with them to erase, to arrest them without having to kill them. You see what I'm saying? But the same, uh, you know, rule don't apply, of course, to sole black people in America, especially a sole black male, you know? And, and, and so uh, it's like, man, we up against a lot here. And, and they making it very obvious, the uh, blatant, like they trying to go back to 1956 or 1950. Like they lay, <laughs> trying to let you know, we, we trying to take America back to what we once had it as, you know? And, and so, yeah, you know, um, this, this thing is for real. And y'all around here, you know, acting tough with each other, especially on social media and on the streets. Y'all acting all crazy and tough with each other and not knowing what's happening outside y'all uh, circle as a group. And of course, yeah, it, it, it has something to do with a lot of external influences, too. But that's not no excuse in 2022. Okay. All this shit, all this crap about what the uh, Caucasian did and this and that to black people, that's dead. That's that that ought to be a dead conversation among so black people. It's all about how can we overcome and put ourselves in a position to where we ain't got to worry about these white folks disrespecting us, killing us. Just mauling all over us like we just animals or whatever, you know. That's why we came with the idea of us taking control of a state where we could have land, where we could uh, establish at least starting with a settlement to quarantine ourselves. Where we could make a way for other black people who don't want to deal with that stuff in other different parts of the country to have a refuge to come to. And it still could be done, but it might be too late. But if if you put your heads together on a common collective basis, this could still be done. And we at and this is and, and there's no better time than now to do it. Be, because other than that, we are uh, comatose. With the lack of word of saying, you know, we're comatose. You know, we're basically comatose. You see these black politicians, whether in Washington or around the rest of the country, you don't give a damn. Because they influence the positions ain't making no difference in our lives as a people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, even even look at these black judges, prosecutors, police, deputies, correction officers, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and officers of the court. And guess what? They don't give a damn about us, of course, because they want to keep a paycheck. And check this out. You know, and this is nothing to um, be funny about. And this is not taking no shots at the late Breonna Taylor. But she was a, a officer of the court in Louisville. For some of you who may not know. And the police didn't, the, the race soldier didn't try to find out well, who, who apartment we going to. To run up in on, you know. Who is that? Who is that? 
No, all they saw was a nigga and blew her away. And I'm sorry for her and I'm sorry for her family, but that's what happened. And they would not be held accountable. Thus far, although her mother is trying to petition the Justice Department to, uh, you know, to, to bring them to justice for what they did to her daughter, and rightfully so. But uh, these people don't care if you even work in a system, basically. Look how they even, look how they even killing or, or attacking cold black police officers, especially ones who decide to speak out on the racist corruption going on in these police forces around the country. You see? So, I mean, they don't care. You could holler out, oh, I'm blue, I'm one of y'all. Nigga, take this ass whooping. <laughs> Put your hand behind your back, treat you just like any other criminal. <laughs> you see? <laughs> but you supposed to be one of them, right? <laughs> Yeah, you know, so, I mean, it's like, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's it's like, man, you got to understand and wake up. <laughs> we are in a dire situation. We're more wor in a more worse position than the people of Ukraine is. Because when all said and done and dust clear and, uh, you know, they get done with this thing going on with them in Russia. They, of course, they're going to have a lot of rebuilding to do because of the destruction that Russia is handed to them. But, of course, they will still have a land to go back to. And with that said, we as indigenous black Americans are not in that position. See. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> There's no, there's no, uh, I mean, you see all that support being poured out for Ukraine. We, we deserve all that support coming from the international community and plus 10 times way more than them because they wasn't, uh, enduring slavery for over 400 years like we was and like we still is. Matter of fact. Why they was over there discriminating against dark skinned African immigrants. You still got the world helping them. Knowing they over there discriminating against dark skinned Ap uh, African immigrants in that country. Huh. See? So, you know, <laughs> if they could get the royal treatment, <laughs> we should be able to. But we should be able to put ourselves in that position so we can. Uh, uh, obtain that possibility into becoming a reality the, where people would start taking our cause as human beings as far as us being a group of people more serious but as long as we keep killing each other you know and, and, and uh, taking each other out because somebody wearing the wrong color in the wrong hood or got their hat turned the other way in the wrong hood <laughs> Or losing their life, <laughs> you know, over some bull doodle. <laughs> it don't make no sense. I mean, it's. It, I mean, it's, I could go all night long, but I don't got time for that. But I could go all night long and name off a lot of petty stuff that we actually have killed each other over. I'm just talking about hurt each other over but actually killed each other over, which is unbelievable. And then you wonder why, then you sit up and wonder why other black people, uh, you know, choose to move out the hood, as you call it. Or as some of you still try to call the community, which is really not. You know, you get mad somewhere where they left left their own kind behind or left their own community or their own ghetto neighborhood behind or whatever. Listen, a person, when it comes to survival, 
person going to do what they got to do. And I'm not going to knock that. And, and you could call me what you want to on that note, but I'm not going to knock that. You know, because you're not giving the next soul black person a reason to want to stay in the hood, as you call it, or as some of you still call it, the so-called community. You know? So, I mean, it, it, and, it's, and it's sad. It's sad. I mean, you 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 can't you you know, and I know we can't really separate from each other because we are one of the same people when it come to us being in the situation that we're in. But at the same time, I personally, this is me. I personally, in my opinion, I personally can't knock another soul black person that uh separates themselves. From those who are uncivilized, as some would say, you know, and by right, they have a right to do that. Especially when it comes to trying to preserve some type of kind of life or what it or what life is on this earth, because it ain't really much, you know, but. I, I could at least respect them for that, you know? I mean, so I, I don't knock them for that, but that's just me, you know? But it's like, you know, but still, it don't change the fact that we are still, as someone say, in the same boat, too. Okay? Like we've been for over 400 years, but you do have some of us who um, don't have no problems physically removing themselves. And like I said, I'm not going to knock something like that because we're at an all-time savage low amongst each other, whereas that action is necessary at this time. I mean, you know, you can't even... You can't even go outside your door. You can't even walk around without being approached in a negative way by somebody that looked like you. It's at the point now. It's like. You know. Uh, people be scared to even come out and sit on their porch. Let their children play out in the front yard. This is how savage we become amongst each other. Like I say, and they had and, and 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 they do better than this in the wildlife jungle or the animal kingdom. Because they understand the importance of protecting one another and each other, you see. But we don't understand that, especially to be on the human level. And as a people, a group of people, we don't understand that. So, I mean, you know, we have become just that savage. And I must and I must also say, too, that. Um, you know. Uh, sometimes I was matter of fact, brother, I was looking at a video you posted, but. uh I didn't look at it, but it was titled uh, Why Did White People Spare Black People or something like that is to that effect. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, in fact, why did they spare us? Because we're not even worthy of that. That We are not even worthy of that. Just like a, a sister said years ago on the radio, if black people was given a few of them southern states like Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, Louisiana, and the list goes on. We would be killing each other, slaughtering each other overnight, like the uh, Tutsi and Hoodoo tribes in Rwanda, Africa did. We would actually be slaughtering each other in the hundreds of thousands or, or in the millions because of the mentality that we have possessed. 
whether whether it was influenced by the external enemy or prior to us being uh in captivity under the foot of the uh external enemy so we we got a lot of issues that we're dealing with in that uh you know capacity that um uh, we need to understand and realize that you know um it's, it's sad it's sad but um uh, we don't deserve for to come to our rescue a lot of us don't care about each other let alone as a group of people a lot of us don't care about each other's relatives and that's also a sickening part of the story of our uh, experience and so join as a people here in America, you know? So, uh, I, uh, I, I mean, you know, we, 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 we definitely are, uh, like I say, at a point of, uh, being comatose because we're heading nowhere, but in that direction, you know? And, um, like I said, we don't have no, uh, as long as we call each other the nigga word in front of white folks, call each other black, black asses in front of white folks who don't give a damn about us and don't like our ass anyway. Like I see here, even where I'm at locally, you know, going on, you showing people we don't deserve respect just by the mere fact alone of how we treat each other. And, 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 and because of the fact that people could see that is what also helps them to become more emboldened where their hatred grows more for us, which determines their actions toward us. See? So, uh, we have to understand that. But of course, you got those like in social media, black YouTube land. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Or oh, you ain't over here trying to do it like us or you. Well, what have you done? That's more uh, effective than what I'm talking about. See, what, what have you done? Or get on social media, argue with people constantly over their different ideologies, debate over different ideologies, go to war over different ideologies, threaten each other because you don't like something they said behind a debate, uh, one ideology versus another ideology. You see what I'm saying? And so this is just... You know, this is just what's so crazy about it. And if we don't understand that, that's what's going to get us put in the mass graves like these folks have planned for us. Then, hey, and, and, and I mean, you know, see, and see, this is the crazy part about it. We tried to warn you, people like us tried to warn you about this in the 80s, even far as back in the 80s. And this got much worse than it was for black people in the 80s, especially before the time, right before around the time when the crack cocaine epidemic started plaguing our uh, people here in this country. You know, we were, we were more better off in 1982 than we are in 2022 whether you want to know the truth or not about it but that's just the reality of it and i was raised in the 80s so i seen it <laughs> you know so uh i mean it's like uh you know <laughs> we're a lot worse off than we was in the early 80s and that's a daggone shame it really is a damn shame to see how we have regressed in over 50 years since the civil rights movement, which we have accomplished nothing since, you know, so, uh, 
I mean, I don't want to get tongue tied, but I just wanted to uh, passionately speak out on this. You know, and, and, and uh, hey, you know, uh, I just want to passionately speak out on this. And I want to speak out on the fact that, like I said, all these police getting away with murder is a sign, should be a clear sign that they probably got that they got something else worse for us. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a sign that they got something else more worse for us. If they're letting these pl police blatantly get away with just unjustly killing black people in this country, they got something worse for us. Wake up. Wake up, people. Wake up, soul people. The time for sleeping is over. The time for bullshitting around is over. You could be dead the next day just because of your skin color. You could be in prison sitting up facing the life sins or on death row because of your skin color. This is serious. Wake up. This is serious. Oh, no, nah, you are. Uh, no, nah, I ain't worried. As long as I don't break the law. N Negro. What better uh, understanding you don't get? You don't have to commit a crime. To be black in America. To get thrown in prison. On the unjust trumped up charge and do years and years and decades out your life over something you didn't do. Because they want a nigga off the streets. Point blank period. They want us out the way any way they can get us out the way. Whatever strategy they could use. Killing the police killing us or the judge throwing us in the penitentiary. And those of us that do. Um, cater to their system by breaking the law. You only making it more worse sir. You, you, you're really making it worse, sir, even for brothers and sisters who don't go out breaking the law. Because they already want to put you in prison to blow your head off anyway. See, so they say, well, if something happens where so, uh, one of us actually commit a crime, you know what? They'll come to us like they did Breonna Taylor. Once again, a good prime example. They was looking for somebody. Yeah, they was looking for somebody that was involved in crime, but it wasn't Breonna Taylor. See? And look what we got from that situation. Look what we got from that situation. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> this is just this is just real. You don't have to commit no crimes. Look, man, I had a cop running up on me one time years ago down south. Okay, and showed me a picture of another black person and asked me, did I know that black person? I'm just passing through my own uh, apartment, the, the parking lot of my own apartment complex, which I live on. Trying to go on, a, trying to get on about my business. And he want to question me. About somebody else. And then ask me questions. Which led to the rest unfortunately you know <laughs> and I mean we all make mistakes because I, I, I chose not to give them the right uh, identification and so they arrested me on that but still the fact of the matter was had that cop not approached me period that wouldn't even happen see as they call it being in the wrong place at the wrong time but see the fact of the matter was why he ain't approached no white man in that that was walking within that perimeter or no Hispanic. He had to walk up and approach me because he seen another nigga trying to associate me with that so-called nigga. See, that's what happened. You ain't got to be committing no crimes, brothers and sisters, to get put in prison. OK, a jail or prison, it don't matter. You ain't got to be committing no crimes. It's just your skin alone that would get you killed. Your skin color alone would get you killed. 
Your skin color alone will get you killed in this country. You know how many brothers and sisters then died beside Breonna Taylor just because uh, they broke, they they raided the wrong apartment. Just like that, just like that young brother uh, a few years ago that got killed in I think Dallas, Texas, by this white police, which who she, who went to prison over it. Although she only got ten years, but she went to prison over it. And what happened was uh, she went to knocking on her door. It was I think it was her neighbor or something like that. She went to knocking on his door. And all he was doing up in there was listening to music. Wasn't bothering nobody. He opened up the door and asked her what the hell she wanted. Next thing you know, she blow his brains out. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to be commit no crime to be black in this country. You don't have to be commit no crimes to be black in this country. I'm going to repeat that again. You don't have to be committing no crimes to be black in this country. What else y'all call yourselves? Uh, <laughs> something else y'all call yourselves? Uh, uh, Afri uh, uh, Pan-African? You know, whatever you call yourself, you don't have to be Commit no crime because of your skin color alone. You know, so like I said before, uh, you know, whether you're Christian, Muslim too, it don't matter. You get the same uh, treatment <laughs> in that capacity. They don't care nothing about that. All the time I'm looking up on YouTube, I'm seeing brothers older than me, twice my age, and been freed from prison. After being locked up 50 years, uh, some 30 years, six, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, huh. uh, you know, this huh. brother recently uh, had a lawsuit pending against the police that framed him. I forget what state it was in Kentucky. Yeah, framed him. The man did 28 years out of his life for nothing over the false accusation that he killed his white female lover. You see what I'm saying? And he had, the fact is he just got out of prison at that time. And they tried <laughs> and put another case on him over mistaken identity. And come to find out, they found out who the killer was. Who, who the actual killer was. You see what I'm saying? But now, this brother died before he could even see a lawsuit against the police that killed him, all because the courts kept pushing it back. I guess figuring, oh, this Negro getting old, he going to die off anyway, so we ain't got to worry about giving him no money. In other words, we ain't got to worry about giving him no justice, you see. This is the stuff we face with all the time, people. Wake up. You know? Like James Brown say, leave them drugs alone. That's a man. <laughs> Although that it, that it takes more than that to be a man too, but you know, I'm just saying. Be a woman. Take our take our destiny into our own hands because we keep leaving it in the hands of others. This is what we're going to keep getting. So, I mean, you know, uh, it's like, man, you know, I, I, I have to say that, uh, man, we got to wake up and actually do something right now. And this is and there's no better time than now. To come together and, and 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 take our liberation to the point where we could 
open the doors, do all the rest of that other tiddly bit stuff we be talking about doing. Because right now we not in the right position to do that. Fars, uh, you know, on our uh, behalf as a people. So, uh, I mean, you know, uh, it's like, um, <sighs> you, you know, we we are we are we are buying time. We're buying time, like uh, Doctor Malachi York used to call it, the hourglass. You know, we're running out of time. We're really running out of time, and if we do not, uh, you know, get it together. Matter of fact. Right now, it may be too late. So we really got to get on the ball and get this show rolling so that we could uh, become free because we're not free. I don't care what you got, your, your billions, your millions, your, your billions, your millions, or uh, your big bank accounts, your mansions, your nice Lamborghinis, your Mercedes Benz, all the other stuff, that don't mean nothing. Especially when the racists could take it away from you just like that. And you ain't got no power from doing it. I mean, you know, talking about the, these laws protect us. Listen, these civil rights, if these civil rights laws really protected us, we still wouldn't have the conversation today about voter discrimination in this country in 2020. So stop it. With oh, we got we got protection with these civil rights laws. But yet we still being discriminated against in housing, education, and in the job market. See? So stop it. <laughs> really. Stop it. But uh I mean, you know, uh We, we we got to understand that uh this, this is not no game, people. This is definitely not no game, and and um we can't you know keep on playing with ourselves, especially wasting our own time, well as other people's time that that want to help us get to the promised land, as someone by the name of MLK would once say, you know, and um. I mean, it's it's like, um, you know, we have no time to be uh, wasting. We done wasted enough time. And um, I must say that um, to my brothers and sisters out there that's caught up in them gangs that's caught up in them streets, period, far as drug addiction, or whether you are selling poison to your own people. I must say this, you know, uh, there's a bigger plan outside of that against us. We've been more we've been warned about this for years and years coming down the pipe. Now we see it's an all-out attack on us more so than 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 it even was during our ancestors' time, during the civil rights movement, and like I said, even during the early 80s. Which which was just about thirty, which is thirty some years ago. So, I mean, we we are uh, in a situation that uh, you know uh, we need to uh, start with ourselves and and start thinking about where we're going as a people because we're going nowhere but to total destruction. And this is what it is. If they really stop, if they really cared about stopping the crime in our in, in our neighborhoods, 
especially in places like Chicago, Detroit, Baltimore, D.C., you know, Atlanta, and the list goes on, then uh, they would have by now. They got all the resources in the world to put an end to crime in this country. So you wasting your time depending on the system to do it because they simply don't care. That's why they dropping off racks of guns. And I even heard out there it's getting that bad in places like Sacramento, California. Like the one brother, um, uh, that one brother, Stephen Clark, that was killed by the police in the backyard of his own house, I believe it was. Um, you know, uh, his brothers just recently spoke out against the violence in Sacramento, California, where his brother's murder took place at, at the hands of the race soldiers, you know, and, and, and um, it's like he even saying it got to stop, you know, let alone the fact that his own brother got killed by the police, but that the fact we got to stop killing each other. And I could really, and I felt his uh, spirit because he was very passionate about it when he spoke on that. You know, and, and uh, got to stop. You know? And, and, and so, uh, and we can't wait on no religious group to help us because we know that ain't worked either. And, and obviously won't never work. I mean, we got an organization called the Nation of Islam, or at least the faction of the organization of the Nation of Islam that's headed by Louis Farrakhan that has a lot of influence and that could put a stop to or black you know and by the nation is the time of Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm X so uh, you know <laughs> That's also another indication that that's not the question as far as them being able to have really any effect on uh, changing the situation as far as the violence that's going on in black neighborhoods around this country. And, and um, I, it's just it's just sad, you know, it really is. Sad. It's really sad that 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 I mean, we, we have to just wake up every day and face this and hope that we don't even lose our own lives, you know, let alone worrying about other groups of people that hate us and what other groups of people can do to hurt us, to take our lives or these racist police, or, uh, you know, killing one of us like they have done and are doing on the daily basis in this country. We also worry about each other, and that's even worse. You know, if we don't wake up and actually do something about this by taking real prompt immediate action, not waiting on some uh, two or six thousand year old messiah to come and then we are doomed <laughs> as 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 those are uh, prophet. 
or, or dooms or whatever they call it, prophet or doomers or whatever would say, we are doomed. Yes, we are doomed. It's that simple. The reality is, is that it is what it is. And, and, uh, Hey, and of course we, sides we worship and they not coming through to get the job done. And don't tell me that God helps those and themselves. Well, if you know that then why you ain't helping yourselves by solely be, because y'all just to do it. See, so it's, I'll say that a lot of times because y'all not really doing nothing to help to help us come out of our condition. So all that about God going to help us when we help ourselves. Well, how about this? Just know that no God is going to no God is going to come from nowhere and help you because what it's really saying is that you're the God. You remember this uh, phrase? Did I tell you ye that ye, did I not say ye are gods? That's how I go. Yeah, did I not say that ye are gods? Well, you're the God. What you waiting on? I mean, you've been praying and praying for over hundreds of years. To come out your misery. <laughs> and no God has came from nowhere yet to do it. All these gods y'all call on ain't came from nowhere yet to help y'all. To help us. Rather to say, you know, so um, it's like, uh, like I said, uh, we just we just uh, buying time for error. <laughs> Instead of, you know. Utilizing, as some would say, the God within us to make the change happen. Because that's the only thing it's going to depend on is us. And it's just that simple. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, I mean, we have to wake up and actually utilize the God in us once again. To make the change happen because no other guy outside of us is coming from nowhere to help make it happen. Let alone to do it themselves. So with that said, um, I just wanted to uh, rant a little bit, like I said, because I'm passionate about this situation as I'm speaking on as a topic. And um, get it together. That's all the thing I could say. I'm not here to broad beat, beat us. I'm here to uh, encourage us. We all in this together. And with that said, I'm going to yield my mic in peace. All right. want to thank Brother Talib for bringing us this topic tonight. I hope that uh, you enjoyed uh, what you heard, whether you agree or disagree. And um, it is certainly a topic that needs to be spoken of. Before we close out tonight, I would like to piggyback off what uh, our brother Talib has said and also address a little bit of the commentary I saw in the chat room. <clears throat> After I do that, brother Talib, you can uh, bring bring everything to your to uh, your closing remarks and just take us out after after I do that. Okay. All right, definitely. You have time? 
Yes, I do. Okay. One thing that must be understood in order for us to be successful, in order for us to begin to solve our problem once and for all is we must become a people. We speak as though we are a people and we're not. We're just a bunch of folks doing our thing. We have not been a people. Of course, our ancestors was not a people, they were slaves. And then these slaves were set loose, not set free. They were set loose to live or die. And they did not come together as a people. Everybody went their way. You make it or you don't. And even to this day, we are all in our little separate groups or we are just individuals. Nowadays, it's about individualism. We don't care nothing about groups. A few years ago during the civil rights era, there was a group mentality, but there was no people mentality. There's a different. We got in our groups. There was the Nation of Islam. There was the Black Panther Party, SNCC, blah, blah, blah. Southern Christian Leadership Conference, blah, blah, blah. Everybody into their groups. And we do our own thing, like James Brown said. <laughs> but doing your own thing has caused you to be in the, like Papa said, in the predicament that we find ourselves in today. Because only a people and the power of a people can change this situation. You must become a people. During the 60s, we gravitated upon the label called black. I'm black and I'm proud. Black, 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 black power. And it worked for a little while. But still we was in groups because we was black power. But I'm I'm Nation of Islam. I'm black power, but I'm, I'm Black Panther Party. I'm whatever. There was no attempt to be a people. There was division. There was no unity in the 1960s, contrary to popular belief. The only unity was everybody was complaining about the same problem. But there was no unity in how to solve that problem. There was no unity in becoming a people. You must become a people because if you don't become a people, then you don't see other persons like yourself. You don't view yourselves as family. So when Huey P. Newton went to jail, there was a few people outraged. Free, free Huey. I, I don't remember or didn't hear that the Nation of Islam uh, printed in the Muhammad Speaks, free Huey P. Newton. Uh, we need to get he, Brother Huey out of jail. I don't, I don't remember that. I mean, they could have done it. I don't think they, I don't think the Nation of Islam did that. Huey P. Newton was in jail on his own and those people who support Huey, they were the ones that rallied and tried to get that man out of jail. Um, I don't remember Dr. King speaking on Huey P. Newton. Get that man out of jail. Everybody is doing their, their own thing. And that's what's going to keep you on the bottom. And that's what's going to seal your fate. As Dr. Claude Anderson said, you're going to be either extinct or you are going to be the permanent underclass. That's what we are on our way to being right now because we're not a people. You must become a people. The reason why I chose Soul Brothers and Sisters as an identity, as a label, because under that label, all our similarities, all those things that connect us, is the, found, is the foundation or the umbrella. And all these other things that we identify with can go under that umbrella. 
So I'm a soul man. I'm a soul brother, but I'm nation of Islam. I'm a soul brother, but I'm Moorish. I'm a soul brother, but I'm Christian. That's the way it was under black power. That's the way it was under soul in the 1960s. All these things under one umbrella. And quite truthfully and honestly, using soul power, using soul is more better than black because it takes you out of the race crap because we are more than race. The, the problem with race is the reason why we're in the condition that we're in. Black was chosen to be targeted to be oppressed. It is the reason. Black is the reason why we are suffering the way we are today. Why would you want to hold on to something that caused your oppression and you think that that's something that's going to free you, relieve you of that oppression when black, something that you did not create, a European creation, black is a racial construct created by Europeans in the late 1700s. And this we know, but we hold on to these labels. You should not want to be or have any kind of relations with anything outside of yourself that you did not create. Those things that would, would cause your victimization. You should not want that. So when we say soul brothers and sisters, I don't know the origins. I don't know exactly where it come from. I am very sure it has religious uh, connotations or whatever. But it came from us. It came from us. It did not come from Africa, did not come from China, did not come from Asia. This is something that belongs to you and me, it's us, and we can define it however we feel it should be because it's mine, it's ours. And you take that identity and then you unite under that and rally under that one identity that put us all under one umbrella so we can become a people. If you don't become a people, you're not gonna solve anything. It's not gonna happen. Like I said, you can be a Christian, you can be a Moor, you can be a Muslim, you can be anything you want to, but you must become a people. You must become a people first. If you cannot become a people, you're done. It's simple as that. And maybe you are African because Africans are divided. If it was not for the division of Africans, the Arab or the European slave trade couldn't have never have happened, but they don't see themselves as a people. They were in their own nations and their own tribes. And you see what happened to a whole entire continent. They have fallen and chances are they will not rise again. <clears throat> so, Really, this conversation, if you can't become a people, our conversation really is done. We're just waiting on death. This conversation is done. You can feel good, like animals waiting to slaughter. Like I said in one of my last talks with us, those animals at the slaughterhouse just living their life until it's time for them to die. They just living a life, eating grass, cock a doo to do if you're a chicken until it's time to go to the slaughterhouse and get your head cut off and sliced up and, and whatever. But until then, the animals act normal, like nothing's going to happen. That's how we, we do. We just act like nothing's happening. We act normal until it's time for the slaughter. And that's, it's just a matter of time before the big slaughter. You think you're upset now. You're not really that upset, but the big slaughter is coming. I don't wish to be around. Some of y'all younger brothers and sisters, you might experience that and see that, but it's coming because you have not prepared. You are in a slaughterhouse waiting for the slaughter, but you're comfortable like those animals at the slaughterhouse. I don't know how many of you ever been to a slaughterhouse, I know right there in Nebraska, there's a lot of slaughterhouses. And if you ever go to those slaughterhouses and just watch the animals, they, they don't, they're not tripping off the fact 
that in a few days or in a few hours, they're getting ready to die. That's why, that's why they are there to be slaughtered. We don't become a people. We're going to be slaughtered. It's just a matter of time. We must become a people so we can rally, so we can see ourselves as family. We don't see each other as family. A lot of us are individual. I got mine, you get yours. That's the kind of mentality we have. And as groups, that's how we think as a group. I'm a Pan-African. And you hear this, you hear this from Guy in Hollywood all the time, that crazy Pan-African fella. I'm not looking to get everybody because you know you can't get everybody because what you're talking about is divisive. All these things, these ideologies and beliefs are very divisive, hateful, nasty. You don't, you're not, you don't have no care about a people. You only care about your group. When you care about your family, when mother goes to the store and buy food for her family, and her and her husband are good parents, you have to consider, well, Little Bobby don't like peas. Little Susie is allergic to peaches. You have to take in consideration all your family members. But then you have abusive parents. If I put it on your plate, you're going to eat it. And that's, that's the mentality or the mindset many of these people who claim they love us, that's what they have. Whatever they put on our plate, we're supposed to eat it abusive people, nasty, not considerate. They don't see you as family, just see you as some kind of tool to be used. So we must become a people. If we don't become a people, we might as well just, it's the end. There's no more uh, reason for us to continue this talk. And that's the purpose of the Mississippi campaign. It's an activity. If we implement it and we work together, that activity will cause you to become a people because you're doing something, especially when it's successful, you'd be like, wow, I'm different from you, but look what we did together and I'm a Muslim, I'm a Christian, I'm gay. It don't make any difference. I was homeless. I was two years old. But look what we did together in our differences. This is what we have to understand. You must become a people. Another thing that really messes us up is many of our groups, our, our, our leaders or whatever, they are in a rush to be international. I want to be internationally known. I hear Dr. Umar Johnson, I've been, I've been to Africa, I've been all over the world. They want to say those things. You've been all over the world and you're international, but you have not solved your problem at home first. Brother Talib was talking about Minister Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, perfect example. Well, you see, uh, we have temples all over the country. We have temples in St. Louis and New York and New Orleans and Houston and Los Angeles. And we got temples in Ghana and the, the Caribbean. But look at Chicago. Look at Chicago. You have not done it. You have not healed, made no, no, you are, your headquarters in Chicago is in shambles. But what if you took that energy that you're using to go all over the world and concentrate to get Chicago right so Chicago can be the example, so Chicago can be that, that light? Now you got something going on. But we're so in a hurry to be famous. Look what I got. I'm all over the world. But look where you live. Look at your headquarters. So in a rush. 
there are people back in the day in the 60s, there were people who became leaders that was not their, their intent to become a leader. They was just wanted to solve their problem. Dr. King didn't ask to be no a leader. He knew he was being raised to be uh, the leader of a church, but not of a movement seeking justice for his people. He didn't ask for that. Malcolm didn't ask for that. He didn't ask to be for a leader. And so in 2022, we have people, they want to be leaders. They really don't qualify, but they like the idea because of the women and the money, all those things that come with leadership, but nobody really ready for a bullet. And they really don't have the skills and they don't have the vision in order to be a leader, but people gravitate toward them because they're charismatic and they sound like they know what they're doing. And, and they offer you the, the same usual feel good rhetoric that we're used to hearing. Leadership is, is not a joke. Many of you have held management positions being a manager, being a president of a company is great responsibility because all everything that goes wrong, when you go to McDonald's and you get a cold fish sandwich, nobody cares about the cashier. You said, can I see the manager? You want to see who's in charge. That's a great responsibility. And see, we don't hold our leaders responsible. How can Louis Farrakhan, just using, not picking on the Nation of Islam, but I'm just using the Nation of Islam as an example. How can Louis Farrakhan get all these thousands and thousands of dollars or these preachers and nobody's held accountable for nothing? But this is what we do because we're looking out for, we're looking out, we're just looking for feel good rhetoric. And what has that done for us? It has done absolutely nothing. Brother Talib was talking about the support that Ukraine is getting from Europe. So my question to the Pan-Africans and all these I love Africa folks, where is your Africa that support us the way these Europeans are supporting Ukraine. Matter of fact, have they ever supported us? I know they would take from us. They would be happy to take your American dollar. They would be happy for you to come and foam at the mouth over them or whatever. They have more than you do. They have resources. They have diamonds, they have gold, uranium all these different types of things. They don't give us nothing. America is sending millions and millions of dollars to Ukraine right now. And after the war is over, just like Brother Talib said, they got to rebuild. Those people don't have no money to rebuild. Who's going to be sending and giving the money to rebuild Ukraine? Guess what? Our money, because we're taxpayers in America, we are going to help Rebuild Ukraine. <laughs> what is Africa doing for us? Where is our, where are the African nations sending money to help the so-called nigger in America? Now or ever. The only thing Africans would do is take. So why should I be head over heels with Africa and Africa? Now I can understand why Ukraine would be in, in love with America and which they tripping because that leader is telling Joe Biden, it ain't enough. I want more. I want more. <laughs> and Joe Biden is like, look, sucker, <laughs> we got to be careful trying to give you more and more. You're going to cause us to get up, mess around and cause World War Three. That's what it's about. And everybody's going to lose. 
because somebody going to push that nuclear bomb. The first one that go off is only popping. <laughs> it's only popping. You can see it. Once it gets started, <laughs> <laughs> once it gets started, it's only popping. And I want to say this in my conclusion in response to, to Brother Steve. <clears throat> Let me find that comment because he said he said some things here. Let me see if I can find this one particular comment real quick. Who was way up there? Okay, good brother Steve says it's really game over for black people, but maybe a small group of us can work among ourselves in a gated homestead community somewhere. I wish you just hit the hit the link, uh, brother Steve. Because I really can't do all this back and forth reading in the chat room. But I, I will try to, to address some of some of the this this uh, in the uh, in the chat room. He says it's really game over for black people, but maybe a small group. Group is the noun. Small is the adjective. Small is not going to get you nowhere. Make you feel good, but it's not going to get you nowhere. If we can't do it as a people, and it's going to be hard as hell as a people. A small group ain't got nothing coming. You can't escape death. You can't run and hide. What make you think that you're going to do better? What are you What are you going to do better as a small group when you're dealing with people that's way larger than you that can take you out anytime they feel like it? And that's including other undesirable black people like you say in your small group. How long you gonna hold out? How long is your little water gonna hold out? Your little guns? Whatever you think that you can do in your small group. How long is it gonna hold out? The only chance we got is as a people. A small group in this situation is not gonna do you no good at all. That's just the reality of it. Good brother Steve says, we need to separate from the undesirables. Who are the undesirables? There are people who say that Angel Snub Nub 7 is an undesirable. Gay people are undesirables. Or is it just the criminal element? Let me tell you something about our brothers and sisters and the criminal element. There's a lot of prejudice and bias against our people. I was locked up and people that's supposed to be so criminal and a lot of them was charged with heinous crimes. Nobody is born wanting to be a prostitute. I never heard a little girl Ooh, when I grow up, I want to be a prostitute and I want to be a stripper. Oh, when I grow up, I want to be like Al Capone. Things happen in people's lives. And I think it was Brother Talib, we talked about this in a prior uh, live stream. People, or uh, uh, um, we was with Brother Denzel. Uh, shout out to our brother, Denzel Rogers. A lot of our people come through Bad homes, bad parents. They come from bad places and they get caught up in situations. Some people get started because they're trying to, trying to live. I'm hungry. Starving. All of us didn't have good parents. Some of us had no parents. Some of us been on our own since they since we was 13 or 14 years old. And back in the day, I know when my grandmother and people was growing up, 
They was leaving home at 10, 11 years old. Going around the country. This is why we have to become a people so they can have a support system so people can know that somebody loved them. Somebody cared for them. That's why they join gang. That's why a lot of people, they don't have any support. They don't have any family. That's why we get caught up in these things. What's an undesirable? An undesirable could be a Christian. I don't want to be around no Christian. They believe in that old stupid white man, Jesus. That's an undesirable. Who is an undesirable? Who dictate who is an undesirable and who's not? You could be Good brother Steve, an undesirable. Oh, you don't believe in, in God. You're undesirable. You married to a white woman. You're unde undesirable. Who determines who's an undesirable and who's not? This is what I'm saying about these groups. The group mentality, the individual mentality. I got mine, you get yours. Good brother Steve says a small group of us can become a group of people. Again, small. The word, the key word here is small. When you're dealing with a large problem, only a large group can deal with a large problem. A small group cannot deal with a large, a severely large problem. Make you feel better, make you feel good. Well, I, I ain't like them. I'm not like them, them Negroes over there. That's our problem. I, I'm not like them. But again, when the police see you, you're like them. When they blow your brains out or these race soldiers catch you in the wrong spot and they lynch you. We have to become family. We have to become a people. And sometimes we have to just bear with one another. You have to understand other people's situation. We have to have compassion for, for one another. A lot of people come from bad places. I, when I was locked up because I listened to a person's story, I had grown big men. They wanted to tell somebody their story. They never had nobody to listen to them. And I just listened. I didn't even say nothing. And they would come and just sit there and just talk. Man, when I was little, and they just tell me their whole life story. Why are they telling me their life story? Because I listened to them. People, sometimes people just need somebody to talk to. And they think that person care about them. Yeah, these people are murderers. Yeah, they steal. Yeah, some of our people have done some horrific things. But deep down inside, that don't mean that's who they are. We have to have compassion for one another. Understanding. Because everybody wasn't privileged to have a good house, good home. Listen to Brother Talib's story. Brother Talib, family problems. He came from a bad place. I would hope that Brother Talil would write that, begin to write his book. I would really help help you to do 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 to uh, to do that. That book that the deacon said he wants you to call it my journey. I can't read all this what Brother Steve is saying. Okay, so you think you're gonna change the hearts of niggas on Demon Time with Mississippi campaign? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Because you have to have a different mindset. You have to have a different attitude. You have to be patient. It's like dealing with sick people. When you are in the hospital and people are vomiting and and they can't take a bath and they stinking. You can't go in there. Ooh, you stank. Ooh, you why are you vomiting on me? They sick. You have to treat our people. You have to treat yourself. We're sick. Nobody is perfect. 
You can't be an uppity, bougie Negro because you got it together. Everybody don't have it got together. Everybody don't have $10 in their pocket like you do. Everybody not driving a Mercedes Benz like you do. Everybody can't pay their bills like you do. I remember I used to have that attitude. Well, I can do this. Everybody is not me. Do you know when I was locked up? Out of a hundred years, I was the first person that was able to get out of that mental institution without those people's approval. There was many, many people before me. Everybody can't do, they're not in the situation. Most of those people can't hardly read and write, a lot of those people. And a lot of them, because of their mental problem, their drug addiction, they're not in the city. I never had a problem with, with drugs, addiction, or alcohol. My strongest points was reading and writing. I was always a good writer and could read. That put me in a better position so I could accomplish what I accomplished. But many of those people couldn't do it. They was drug addicts. Drunks. And some of them did suffer some kind of mental breakdown because they lost their father and couldn't get over it. Or they was in the army, post-traumatic uh, syndrome, things of this nature. We are so selfish and we only think about ourselves and you're going to get what you get. Good brother Steve says separation. I agree with separation when you see that somebody there's no there's no hope and they're violent and they're detrimental I can understand that but we have to you have to have compassion with a people that's destroyed and we've been in bad shape for over 400 years can't base everything on you and where you're at Just like in our families, we have we have people that's doing bad in our family. What do you do when you love your family, no matter wh what they are? You try to help them. You're going to try to help your drug addict uh, cousin and your alcoholic father and your prostitute mama. You want to try to help them to do to do better. You do that because they're family. But when you don't see nobody as family, oh, that's them niggas. Let me get the hell away from them. That's our problem. We have no love for nobody. We don't believe in giving somebody a chance. Malcolm X got a chance. He was in prison. You heard Malcolm X's life. Somebody gave him a chance, made him able to change, change his whole entire life. There's a lot of Malcolm X's out there. The original members of the nation of Islam, all of them was prostitutes and criminals and drunks. And that's what that's who the original members of the nation of, of Islam were. They are an example of what we can do if we were able to do that as a people. Instead of judging folks and being bougie and uppity. Because that's not you. I used to be that way. Until I was locked up. When I was locked up, I began to see things a whole lot different. Those people aren't as bad as you may think. They're human beings. And a lot of them have remorse. For some of these heinous crimes. Some of them did because they was under the influence of alcohol or drugs or maybe post-traumatic syndrome or something like that. We have to have compassion and understanding and empathy for others. But if you don't see me as family, then you don't. See, people that see me as family they say, oh, that's Angel Snub Number 7. He don't believe in God. They just laugh it off. But Angel going to help us do what we need to do. 
That's family. They ain't gonna be tripping off the fact that I'm talking about I don't care about God and whatever. I don't care about eating pork or whatever. Oh, that's angry. That's that's how he is. Family. But when you're a dictator and you're a damn tyrant yourself, and you think you better than somebody. See, that's our problem. We think we better. We have the same attitude and mindset as the oppressor because he's better. So since the white man is better than black folks, they should work for me so I can live a life of leisure. That's all I got to say. I'm going to turn the mic over to Brother Talib and he can... Uh, bring his closing remarks, and he's going to take us out of here. Thank you all for listening, brothers and sisters. <laughs> to live. Yeah, I'm right here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you now, yes. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm about to get ready to prepare uh, some dinner, but other than that, uh, I just wanted to say, man, that, uh, you know, and kind of piggybacking off what the brother just got done saying, we do have a habit of being judgmental toward each other. Yeah. I've experienced that in my own personal life. I've seen other people experience it. And it's not cool to be judgmental, you know, toward each other, especially when we all got skeletons in our closet. Yes. Whether it's drug addiction, prostitution, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, being a killer, uh -huh. a child pedophile, a, a child pedophilia, or, or you know, or somebody uh, that that's a, a bully, <laughs> you know, or somebody that's um, you know, a corrupt person. Uh, you know, that'll rob you blind, especially if you don't watch what they doing, you know. <laughs> I mean, all that. We got all that among us as a, a group of people in this country, you know. And and uh it's like <laughs> so who can we who who's the who's the call the uh the 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 kettle pot black, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, nobody can call the uh kettle pot black <laughs> you know what i'm saying when when we all uh uh you know so disoriented shattered <laughs> you know whether it's in our own individual lives our family lives or just us again as a group you know in general so we don't have no we we and, and for those of you i want to say this to those of you who say that you come from better families Trust me, once again, I've spoken about this on other live podcasts. Just because your family or your immediate family don't have issues or that are more eternally, uh, you know, dysfunctional like other families do, that don't mean that there is nothing wrong in your family. Like I said, we all as soul people in this country have been affected by slavery. And like Malcolm X once said, the after effects of slavery is still on us to this day. And it affects us all who come from that group of people, which all of us do as uh, dark skinned descendants of slaves born in America. And we all share some type of burden from that or some type of scar. We all bear some type of scar from that, whether it's individuals or families, okay? So, and, and also especially from this uh, drug epidemic, especially called crack cocaine, it's destroyed millions of us, millions of families. And like I said, even if, if it didn't affect us, the reason it probably didn't affect some of us because some of us are economically well off than some others, but it still affected us to a big degree. Okay. Whether we want to recognize it or not, it affected us. I have a, a cousin I talk to all the time. 
brother, he'd been to college, was successful with a career, you know, uh, has a, has a couple of children already graduated from college, moving along in, in careers with careers, you know, doing a thing or whatever. But you know what, what he always talked about? He said drugs fucked our family up. Mm. He agreed that drugs fucked our family up like so many of us with families that drugs, especially crack cocaine, has affected. OK, so I don't care what may seem. Uh, greener looking from the outside is detrimental. Once you get in the inside and see. Like I said, just because you see. You know, you got some of us, like I said, that are more wealthy than others or have a little bit more considered so-called middle class that have some a little more than us that are in wretched poverty. But let me tell you something. They have problems because of what I just said, because as a result of slavery and as a result of the drug epidemic. OK, this thing just don't stop at affecting one family or one individual. This thing is a cycle, uh, is, is a domino effect, okay? This triggers our whole group as a people as a domino effect, okay? Whether you're a crackhead or not, them crackers over there going to say, oh, that look like a crackhead because they see a nigga. They all crackheads, just like we are everything else to them. They all prostitutes. They all gangsters, you don't think that that has any effect? You don't think that has any effect on you, even as an individual, even if you're not a part of that stuff? That has an effect on you. Okay? Why you think law abiding uh so people in this country that are law abiding get pulled over for nothing, get harassed for nothing? I just got through telling you. You ain't got to be committing no crime if you dog skin in this country, especially if you a soul dog skin person. You ain't got to be committing no crime. <laughs> Just your skin color alone. So, yeah, it, it, it uh, all kind of ramifications come with that. It just don't fall on one individual. OK, it just don't fall on one family or, or one particular Little, uh, uh, what you call that, like you call the brother, groups of people, you know. We all got issues that have affected us to the point where we cannot unite as a people. And that's the problem. So when you say you want to take your little group over here and start a settlement or establish a little village over here, over there, that definitely ain't going to work. They'll wipe that out quick. See, when Dr. Malakazi York tried that, you see what they did when they went down there on his land. Even though he was doing some wretched stuff that, that brought that on him, as well as that organization that he was the leader of. But hey, <laughs> just look, look what they did. And there's another example. Look what they did to uh, the John Africa movement. They was in Philadelphia. In a little village called John Africa in the neighborhood, they they set up as a John Africa village movement. Look what happened to them. They were just over there minding their business. Yeah. They act the, the federal government, the black, as a matter of fact, it was a black mayor of that yeah. city of Philadelphia that allowed the federal government to fly over there and drop bombs on them. They wasn't doing nothing to present no threat to where the government need to go and fly over them and drop bomb and drop bombs on them. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, hey, <laughs> you know, that, that 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 what you saying and trying to separate yourself in that way by saying you, in other words, better than die when your doodle -doo stank too. You see what I'm saying? That definitely ain't going to get us nowhere. Matter of fact, that's going to even keep dividing us even more. If we don't stop that. So, hey, you know, uh, I mean, with that said, uh, that's all I had, you know, uh, and, and, and uh, 
Like I say, thanks everybody for listening. And those of you in the chat room that are listening, and especially and the those of you that will catch this video when it's uh posted live, when it's posted on YouTube, and of course, um we have other uh topics coming up soon. I don't know exactly when it's gonna be. I guess the brother also may have something in mind, but we have other topics coming up, so we will be uh informing y'all soon so y'all could come back and uh and get some of this uh reality or wisdom truth and with that said i'm out of here peace <laughs>